Hey guys, Jacqueline here, and welcome to part two of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. So in this part, we're going to be setting up our scene, importing all of our assets, and just kind of getting ready to start our project. So the first thing that you want to do, if you haven't already, is to just switch out of your console tab here and back into your project view. Um, and feel free to organize your Unity um, however you guys are comfortable working with it. Um, if you're a total beginner, like experiment with different layouts um, and just get it so you feel comfortable. Um, if you're a pro, then you already know this, so just keep up the good work. Um, great, so now that we're in our assets folder, we're gonna go ahead and just create a few folders um, for all of the assets that we're going to be importing. So the first thing that I like to add is a new folder for um, our sprites. So go ahead and create a new folder. Um, and if you're new to Unity, you can just right click and hit um, create and then folder, just kind of like how I did here. And then let's name this folder sprites. Cool. So that's gonna be where we import all of our sprites. I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder and I'm gonna call it prefabs. Um, during our time working in Unity, we're gonna create um, basically like saved versions of our work. And um, it's gonna be all set up so that we can um, just drag and drop them into the scene. And so that's where those are gonna be kept. And we'll get into those in more detail as we come, uh, as we make them and we'll go over like why they're important then. Um, but we will need a folder for them. So let's create that now, just get that out of the way. Next, I'm gonna create a folder for my scripts. Um, so I'm actually just gonna call this folder scripts. This is where all of my C Sharp scripts will be saved into. Um, and I might even have some more folders in here once I begin coding, just to make sure that um, all of my assets are organized and I can find them easily. So that is that. And I'm gonna also create a folder for animations. We are gonna be creating animations in this uh, tutorial. So I will want a place to put those as well. And I guess I'm going to add one more folder for audio. Um, all of my audio files will go in there. And then I will also add a resources folder. Um, so that way we have a place for like when we need to add our fonts and things that need to go in the resources folder. Okay, so this is pretty solid. Um, we're not going to be using all of these folders right off the bat. I just like to have them. Um, and if we need to like reorganize later, we can delete some of them or move them um, to however it works for us. But this is great for me for now. Next, we need to get our assets like that we want to use for the way that our game looks. Since we're starting out early, we don't actually need to get like a whole asset pack if you don't want to. Um, my suggestion is to Google free top-down asset characters and search for them. Um, the Google that search that I did led me to this HIO page um, where they have all of these really cool asset packs. Um, a lot of them are uh, paid where you can um, pay whatever amount that you want to or at least a particular amount. So this cozy people asset pack is just all people and animations for them. Um, and it costs about $4 for the pack to use commercially. There is a free version that you can get, um, but you're not allowed to use it in commercial products uh, at all. So if you make a game with their assets, you won't be able to sell it unless you pay the $4. They also have a bundle that is $15.95, nice six. And you actually get all of their asset packs and they actually have quite a few, there's four of them here. So they have their farm, the interiors, uh, as well as a whole bunch of people and animations, um, new hairstyles and clothing, as well as for fishing. Um, I actually went ahead and bought this one. I like, really like their asset pack. I thought that their quality is like amazing. And um, I think I would actually use this. So I did buy it. So I am able to use it uh, in commercial products as well. So if this is interesting to you and you like this, you can also buy this and follow along with me. Um, it shouldn't change the way that we, our, our workflow too much. Um, but these are the assets that I'm going to be using. If you don't want to or don't have the money to splurge for these, you can always find uh, free characters on HIO 
Um, there's a whole bunch. You just kind of have to search through here. Uh, so there's these ones. It looks like that they're probably free. Um, and they include animations and such like that. We can also go to Kenny. So Kenny.nl is a great place for free assets. He makes a whole bunch of them. Uh, here, there's a whole bunch of different top-down and like roguelikes and different types of like tile sets and uh, various for various types of games. So feel free to check that out. You could probably find some free assets on here. Uh, or just, you know, scour the internet. But these are the two places that I go the most for assets. Another place that I go is called um, Game Art 2D. And we'll go there. And it is royalty-free game assets. Not everything on here is free, although they do have um, freebies. So let's see. So they're free game assets here. So they have uh, various characters. Um, I think all of their characters that are free are platformer characters, so this isn't going to necessarily work for the game that we're doing, but it's a great place to get some free assets. Uh, and they do also have top-down assets, but you do have to pay for them. So if you go to sprites, um, you can just scroll down to you find four directional, and you'll find a variety of four directional characters here. Most of them range from $10 to $18, so... You can also check these guys out. Okay, so now that you have your sprites downloaded and you're ready to start, let's go back to Unity and we'll import our assets. So what you wanna do is go inside your sprites folder. You wanna right click and click import new asset. And this is gonna bring up a um, like a file explorer for you to import. Um, you can also just drag the files from like, your desktop into Unity if you wanted. Um, but for me, this is actually a little bit easier since I just downloaded this characters thing. Okay, so I'm gonna open up, it's in order, here we go. We'll just do the walk for now and I'm just gonna import, oh, I see, okay. So I'm just gonna import character one walk for now. Um, that's all we need. All right, and then back in Unity, it should reload itself and then you should see your character walk. So if you got the same assets as me, it will look like this. If you didn't, it might be multiple frames um, of walk or possibly a sprite sheet like this. So my sprite sheet is a, uh, is a sprite sheet. So it has multiple sprites on there. So with the sprite selected in your project view, in the inspector, you'll see all this information about it. You want to change your sprite mode from single to multiple and then click on sprite editor and click apply. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take us all of these and we're going to cut them out. So that way, uh, we can have these individually. So that way we're not like having all of them out there at once. So we want to just click slice. This usually is pretty good when it's, when you do it automatically. Um, so as you can see, it pulled all of these. Although I think with our animation, this should be fine. We might want to adjust some of these like later if it's lo looking a little weird with um, the sprite sizing, but I think overall this should be pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and click apply. And now that we've done that, a arrow should show up here and you should be able to to like drag or move or click on any of these to like see them now that they're like individual sprites and mine are in pixel art and they're looking a little hazy down there so i'm going to do a few things to increase the quality that we can see these at so for pixel art you'll want to go and click on your main sprite here and in the inspector we'll scroll down to our filter mode which will change to point, which is no filter. And then also in these uh, tabs here on default, we'll wanna change our compression to none and then click apply. And that should fix their haziness. They should be way more crisp and they should look exactly the way that you want them to look as pixel art. 
Uh, for other 2D things, you may not want to do this. You might, if it's looking like too hazy, um, because Unity does like compression, which causes like um, smoothing on your character. So if you don't want that, you can just go ahead and change the filter mode and the compression mode. All right, so now that we have our character in the um, inside of our engine, we're basically set up to start creating some functionality for our game. Great, so now that we have our character imported, now we just want to drag him into our scene so that way he is 100% ready for when we are going to um, start adding functionality to the game. So if you just want to click into your sprites folder if you're not already there, and I'm just going to choose the first frame of this walk, uh, which is a walk down, it looks like. Ooh, he's tiny. Look at how tiny he is. Um, and we're actually going to change uh, a few few more settings because he is so tiny, like way too small. So let's click on our character, our main thing here. Not, not the individual ones, but the sprite sheet. And pixels per unit. Uh, let's change that to, I think mine are 32 by 32. And you can verify this on like wherever you got your uh, assets from. So if we go and click on, let's see, I use these guys. So we'll click in here and it usually tell, yes, sprites come in 32 by 32. All right. So 32 by 32, we want to change our pixels per unit inside of our inspector over here with your sprite sheet selected. We'll change 100 to 32 and then we'll hit apply. So that's going to make our character a lot bigger um, and he's going to um, be much more visible, although he's still pretty small. Um, so we might even want to make our camera a bit smaller. So right now, our, so if you go in your hierarchy and click on your camera, you'll go to the size here and you can adjust this. And the size is really, all that's doing is changing the height of your, is changing the height of your screen. Um, and the smaller this is, the bigger this guy's going to appear. Um, so currently we had our set at five, which makes him like really tiny. I think I'm going to do 2.5 just to kind of, Make him a decent size and think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we have our camera size adjusted and our sprite in the scene, let's go ahead and just create a new empty game object so that we can set up our player so it's ready to go for when we're ready to add code. So right click, create empty. And then I'm just gonna name my player. And then we're gonna make sure all of these things are zeroed in at zero, zero. So if you click on player and then hold shift and click on camera, over in your inspector, you should see a transform. Just change the X and the Y to zero, and then don't change anything on the Z, because we don't want to mess up our camera. Because um, the player should already, oh, so the sprite's already at zero, zero, zero. The camera should be at zero, zero, negative 10. Um, so that way it can see the player. If it's on the same plane as the player, like N zero, it's not going to be able to see it. So you want to leave that at negative 10. But it looks like our player, the empty game object that we just created, is actually at a negative value here. Let's just set that to zero as well. Um, so these two should just be like overlapping each other. And now what we want to do is just drag this sprite onto the player that we just created. So what we're going to do here is this top game object, its parent, is going to be our actual player. It's going to be what the um where the scripts are um like how we move the character everything's gonna be on here and we're just gonna have the visuals kind of just follow along so i'm actually gonna rename this game object so you click up here in the top of the inspector you can just call it visuals because that's what they are oops great so with that, our player is all set and ready to go. And next time we're going to be discussing how we can get our character moving and the theory behind um, what we're going to be doing in code. So I will see you then.